Hello everyone, this is Ricky Fury again, bringing you another video talking about survivability in Star Trek Online. Now, my previous video talked about um, kind of like the differences between tactical officers and engineers in terms of tanking, and why you would choose one over the other. Basically, with the deal there for Super that is that tactical officers are able to deal inherently a little bit more DPS for for the simple beam fire will build, while in engineers. Are able, to do, are able to have significantly more combined damage and shield resistance. Now, um, tactical officers can technically pike it, spike it technically slightly higher damage damage resistance rating or damage resistance percentage, but um, tactical or engineer officers have are able to have significantly higher shield resistance, and so should be able to tank a little bit better than tactical officers ever, ever could. Um, today in this video should be hopefully a little bit shorter. Um, I'll be talking a little bit about science officers. In terms of science abilities um, and, and science and, and tanking in general. Uh, I'm not particularly someone who's experienced in science tanking because science tanking is quite a bit different um, than the other two classes in terms of tanking, so it's going to be a lot more generalities here. Um, in the next expansion, I promise I will be making a science Gemini character and I will be experimenting with a lot of this much more in depth um, and see what is the best from what I can tell in terms of like skills and those types of things. Um, so yeah, um, before I even get into that, um, in most in most MMOs out there, you generally have your three classes. You have your class that deals the most damage, you have your class that's able to take the best, and you have your, your class that's kind of the support class that either adds heals and shields to your allies so they can survive easier, or they can add buffs to your allies and debuffs to your enemies so your allies are able to do more damage and stuff um maybe able to take stuff a little bit easier or that or that, that the enemies will do less damage or will get hurt easier faster from your allies uh, and so based on those three general kind of classes in mmos uh, the generality thing is that in, in star trek online your tactical officers are your dps guys the ones that do the most damage your engineers should be the ones that um, are the tanks that do the most, that are able to soak up the most damage in, in fights. And your science officers, in theory, should be the ones that are, that are the, the support guys that do the, the heals and shields to your allies and do the buffs to your allies and debuffs to the enemies. Now, in reality, the way that Star Trek Online works is that in space, outside of your five specific captain abilities, virtually any, any captain can pilot any ship and do any of those three roles easily. Um, now, obviously, certain types of ships will be able to, you know, tank, do DPS, do support types of uh, abilities and things a little bit easier than other ships. But in like the super theoretical realm, every class, every captain thing can do everything equivalently well in space. In ground, that's a bit different. Especially on ground, it's very, very different. Um, if you're a super casual player, I recommend picking a captain based upon the ground abilities and things you want to do on the ground. Because that one's a lot less well has a lot less choices in terms of things they want to do. Um, and if you want the most choices, I'd actually go with, with, with a science captain. They're exceptionally good for healing. They can do they can do tanking very well on, on the ground. And they can also do a lot of damage really quickly with AoE abilities as well on the ground. They're kind of like the all round class for, for ground. Their space stuff is a little bit awkward. And that's why I don't think I really see very many of them in space. Um, I said I also don't have a lot of time experience with them in space, and so I am not the best expert when it comes to this. But I'm going to get my best shot, and then after the expansion launches, I'll hopefully be a better expert after, after playing with stuff for a while with my Gemini Science character. Um, when it comes to science abilities, the reason why science theory could tank really well is that a lot of your science abilities... Um, as I talked about in the threat generation video, um, a lot of the science abilities do zero distance stuff. So basically, um, in terms of threat generation, it's the first time TLDR here. Basically, whenever you're dealing damage, um, the closer that you're dealing damage to the enemy, um, the more threat that, that that amount of damage is going to give to that enemy to want to attack you. So, I mean, just give super basic examples. Like if you have two um, ships, um, if you have you, you and an ally, they're attacking an, an enemy ship, and you're both dealing 
1,000 damage per second to them. But you happen to be one kilometer closer than your ally. The enemy is going to be attacking you instead of your ally. Simply because you're closer, the amount of damage you're doing per second is the same, but because you're closer, he'll want to attack you. Because you, you, you just seem more threatening because you're closer. Um, now, the way the law of science powers works is that, like, since the gravity will attack and drift, tractor beams, the kind of, those are the kind of three big ones, but there are a lot of other ones that all also do this. Um, those abilities are basically kind of like pretend um, zero distance stuff to your enemy. So basically, like, even though you're maybe maybe you're eight kilometers away from the enemy, but because you, they have a gravity wheel from you on them, the enemy thinks that you are zero zero kilometers away from them because they're because you're dealing damage from theoretically zero distance, zero kilometers from them. So they inherently are going to want to focus, like assuming that your damage is relatively close to the to other people around you, or because of threat duration and things, like that equivalent amount of relative damage is still, it's like kind of close, they're going to want to attack you instead of, instead of your allies. Um, now that, that, that only works super well as a science tank, if your science abilities happen to be doing a lot of damage. So, in, in the theoretical science tank builds, or theoretical science builds that you'll see out there, the ones that are very much focused on basically just your science abilities, what they'll actually be built as, because a lot of science ships are 3-3, a lot of them will have a lot of, tor a lot of torpedoes, and then some very specific energy weapons that they're not meant to deal damage, instead they're meant to just deal, just to deal a, certain, a particular proc from the energy weapon to the enemy. The same thing with the particular torpedoes that are chosen. It's basically meant to have the additional procs that will allow your science abilities to hurt even more on, on the enemy. And so for a lot of their builds, they'll actually have um, um, auxiliary primary with shield secondary. Obviously with my picker ship, because I still want to learn how science works, I opted for a beam firewall for the science character, which is, which is very suboptimal. That's kind of how she. This is how my second account science officer is kind of. As I kind of like mentioned, science is I'm not super experienced in science. Besides science on ground, science on ground I'm decently experienced on, but not science in space. Um, most of her experience has been on ground when I've done when I've done PV and cubes and things. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's kind of how how science builds are typically are. Um, I'll, I'll get into the five abilities and why some of these are can be particularly good for, for taking. Um, first thing is sensor scan. Um, unlike the tactical version, which, which is just one target, the sensor scan can do up to 15 targets of an all damage resistance rating um, lowering first for 20 seconds. With that 20 seconds, you know, corresponds pretty much exactly with what do you know? Gravity well, which also lasts 20 seconds. So basically, you launch gravity well at a group of enemies. You basically immediately launch um, a sensor scan right after that, and boom, your your gravity well, because you hope they're maxing auxiliary first, and have that basically a maximum. Your gravity well is doing a ton of damage. You know, and if you have like if you have five science consoles, you have tons of zombie damage on, or on EPG stuff in, in your stats as well. So all that combined, along with a significant damage resistance um, debuff on them, your science, your, your gravity wall alone, will be doing a ton of freaking damage on them. So, yeah. Um, and also because if you have, you know, a, a lot, if you're only a, a pure real science build, you're not going to have threatening stance, so you really need to be relying upon your um, damage it, and then just your plain um, threatening stance have it bring that up in order to actually have the, the, the threat and the things to have, have them attack you. Of course it's kind of a balance because if you do too much damage then, then you're just a you're just a normal DPS person. So kind of balance as to how to do one over the other is kind of a tricky thing. That's why I, I haven't fully figured it out yet. Um, the next ability here is scattering field. It's got it does, it's got does give some good damage resistance, as well as giving some decent bonus all damage category two damage. Uh, thing is though, this isn't just yourself. This is yourself and allies within three kilometers. So if you're a tank, um, your your 
attack guys that are doing lots of damage around you, that would be within 3 kilometers, they would really love to have you activate this thing so that their DPS, if they're doing a special group DPS run, is going to go up significantly and they are going to really love you for it. Um, because of that, um, this sort of thing isn't particularly great for th playing threat generation just because your damage as well as your allies are going up, but since they're both going up, double threat generation for you versus your allies isn't particularly going up any higher. Tell you with the math, yes, it would go up slightly, but because of like if you use the threatening stance, that amount of damage will go up slightly, but just because the multiplicative numbers is going to be less for you than for your allies, because in theory you would do less damage than they would, uh, this overall percentage isn't going to be that great overall for you. Um, I'd really activate this more, I would see this being activated more for the damage resistance rate for them than for the actual damage for you. Um, another one is Southern New Economic Beam. This is a single target uh, activatable ability. Um, this thing has two great, awesome things on it, which kind of like more as a, as, a, as a supporter style would kind of be how you would want to use this, but as a tank, it's also great as well. Um, so if you're fighting a really particularly tough enemy, maybe you're fighting, let's say you're fighting a, a, an NPC Voth ship that has reflective immunity matrix up, so that it's, it's taking zero damage, and it's, and it's, Redirecting all of the energy damage back to your allies that are trying to destroy. Well, you could activate this thing, remove all the buffs on that ship, including the, the immunity on it, and boom, your allies can, can, can hurt hurt the ship again. Not to mention that if you add minus seventy five percent all damage to them for thirty seconds, if you're attacking a guy that's hurting your allies a ton, he's now not as bad. And easy, easier to attack and, and destroy. Um, yeah, it's a decently good ability, especially for a lot of your lower and medium level um, allies that are trying to fight with you. For, for Science Fleet, most of the stuff your allies aren't really going to notice or care about. Uh, the reason why a lot of your allies will notice when Science Fleet is up is more because it's going to add a 40% shield resistance to, to your allies. Which, as, as, as I was mentioning in a damage resistance video, which, again, I will be making better a after the expansion, uh, especially when I get more with how a video ed editing works uh, with my free video editing software, how it's some of the paywalls that I used to have when I was in school. Um, this works in shield resistance it is why your eyes are going to notice that, that they have science fleet. It's going to make their shield significantly stronger. That's not because that they gave additional shield because shield capacity is because the shields are literally going to be able to take more damage than they did while the, while the, than while the shield was just stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, whenever I initially chose to make a science character, I initially made it because of Photonic Fleet, and that I'd be able to, on a dime, if I wanted, be able to beam in five ships for like a minute or two. Um, that would do a little bit of damage, do a little bit of... Um, Distraction, like for instance, on on this tech, on this particular character before I, I I got this ship, I I had a tier four science ship, which you know only had like twenty seven thousand hull on it. Now, if if you have twenty seven thousand hull and you're trying to fight the Vodwar in the Delta Quadrant, it sucks because their torpedoes and mines one shots you, completely utterly one shots you. And so, like, the only way that I was able to actually beat it on my science character was I had to bring in a photonic fleet. Um, I had to zoom around a bit. Um, and I had to keep on firing gravity wells to get them stuck. And then kind of, like, I kept on zooming back and forth from a distance to kind of fully drain them and beat them. And then in the, like, final mission, um, in the Delta Quadrant, because like, I had a tier 4 ship and I didn't, and I had a lot of rare MK12s um, to take down this ship. Um, I literally had to just let my allies beat the enemy for me. And to keep it having enemy ships kind of beat him because my ship couldn't really do very much. I mean, still something. Um, now, uh, the reason why this is kind of less valued today than what it was back a while ago is because um, we have we have different space star starship traits like 
improve command frequency, which um, a decent amount of people will still use, and that you're, you're able to basically spam fleet support now. Instead of having the restriction of 50% hole in order to use it, and, and a cooldown of 15 minutes, um, you're able to just have this trait, and boom, now you can use this every 5 minutes if you want, instead of every, every 15 if you're below 50% hole. Um, and it's a one really nice battleship that lasts for like two minutes. It's really nice. Um, now th this guy is also a five minute cooldown, but it can lower to like two and a half to three minutes if you're constantly spamming um, science abilities and you have and you have photonic capacitor um, in, in your starship traits. Um, that will lower it by 20 seconds for um, for every time you activate an ability after 10 seconds. Because that's 10 second cooldown whenever you use the photon capacitor. So, you know, I mean, it's like every minute you're lowering like that by like by two minutes. So it's like two and a half to three minutes if you time it right. You know, you're able to have a photon capacitor concept. And this, I believe, lasts for about a minute. So, if you time it right for about a third of your fights, you'll have the time fleet up. Assuming your fleet, photonic fleet does not get destroyed before that before that minute's up. Which, if you're a tank in a really intense situation, that will often happen. That your photonic fleet gets beamed in, you do time of damage, and then, then you can all get blown up and just really like, just disappear quickly. Um, so yeah. Still something. Um, I mean, like, there also are, um, the, uh, the Romulan, um, Singularity cores, um, whenever you stack up the Singularity levels, there's also an ability in there called Warp Shadows, which does something similar to Photonic Fleet in that, instead of just random three, three free ships, it's, um, it's three copies of your, or two to three copies of your own ship, um, that, that come out. Based on how long you've charged it, depends on how many ships are out, how much damage those ships deal during the time, um, and how much health they're able to absorb before they, they d disappear. Uh, so Romulan ships also have that one. It's also an ability that I that if, if you're going to Romulan ship and you have to go Romulan ship, which Romulan ships again that's said in a different video don't have often don't have a contract fighter even if their particular class should allow them to, or the, the class ship should allow them to. Um, so yeah. It's just something that's also something to think about. Um, so yeah, um, science can do tanking. I haven't fully fleshed out how they would do it the best way. Um, hopefully in a, in a later video, in a month or two, I will hopefully bring that to you all. Hopefully my ranting and, and discussion is give you some ideas to think about if you actually are wanting to go a science tank build. Um, so yeah. That's all for me for now. Thank you for watching.